gorgeous dominion hi that's a nice name actually thank you you look gorgeous by the way thank you i just had a photo shoot so that's why i'm obviously like obviously thank you so you're welcome to media room hub tv thank you we do hope you enjoy your um interview session with us i hope so too thank you thanks for having me all right so you've been a budding actor and a model mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. all right so how did it all start? Um, since I was 16, or while growing up as a child, I've always had this flair for acting and modeling, but mostly for acting. So um, then when I was 17, I had to go to England to study it professionally in school. And then from studying acting on camera in the UK, in London, then I further had to go to Oxford Brookes University to study contemporary performance arts. So then from there, I had to thrive in and come back to Nigeria to pursue my acting career here in Nigeria. And so far, it's been good. Wow, that's cool. Um, so I want to go straight to your most recent role that um, you played in um, Jude Idada's threesome play. Yes. All right. So given the society we live in, yeah. Nigeria is a very conservative society. Mm -hmm. How was it like deciding to go nude on stage? Okay, so um, when I got the script, when I heard about the whole play, I, got, I had to go through the script, of course, and Jude told me about the character I was supposed to portray in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the play. First of all, I didn't study theater arts in school. I, I'm not a stage, I'm not a professional stage actor. I'm more of a camera act, actress. So I already told him that, okay, Jude, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I can do this, but let's see how we can, you know, work on this and make it, and make it come to fruition. And so it was sort of encouraging. He, had to say, he said he was, was going to train me and see how far we can go on with it. So he encouraged me and we had some rehearsals. We had like a three weeks rehearsals, I think. And then um, I went through the script. I loved the storyline. I loved everything about the whole play. And so I thought about it. I, I mean, I didn't really have, I didn't think deeply about it because I mean, Nigerian, of course, we have our own cultural beliefs in this country, and we have a, we have a strong hold with it. So um, the only thing I thought of was just me, what makes me happy. This is what I want to do. First of all, in, in the film school I went to, you're being taught that you might be asked to come out, come out working, I mean, to work as a, uh, as a nude actress. So it only takes a daring actor, an expressionist, to be able to imbibe the character and bring it to fruition. So when I went through it, I'm like, okay, this is very interesting. Not because of the fact that I have to go start nude on, on, I mean, on stage, but the fact that the storyline was really, really interesting. It was very daring. I love daring storylines. So if, it's not, it wasn't, if it wasn't daring on stage, I don't think I would have done it, so. Okay, so an average person would definitely say that you actually smiled to the bank after you know, <laughs> the performance there. Would you say um, it was the money that actually made you take up such a role? No, but the money motivates, you know. First of all, it's the passion. Secondly, it's the storyline, the character. And then the money motivates you, you know. The money influences you, of course. <laughs> if I wasn't well paid, um, if I wasn't well paid, maybe I would have done it, but I was well paid. But again, the first thing here is, if the storyline wasn't as strong and as daring and as, as thrilling as it was, I don't think I'd have been back. Even if money was, was going to be a lot, I wouldn't have done it still. So it was the storyline, the character, the passion, most importantly, then the money backed it up. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So coming from um, an African background, Nigerian home to be precise. Yeah. When your parents are aware of the fact that you went on stage nude? Mm -hmm. my, my both parents are very aware. First of all, my, my family, I mean, I come from a very, very beautiful family. Where my, my, fam my parents are very supportive of my career, my passion, what I, what I always wanted to do from a from, 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 from child. So my mom had the storyline. And the fact that I was supposed to go, you know, I told her I barely knew it anyways, the first initially. But I told her later that I was actually, you know, the way I was on stage. And then she was like, the only thing she said was, but the first thing she said was, I mean, are they going to recognize you on, 
in reality that you are the one on stage. Then she said, anyways, as long as it makes you happy, as long as you know what you're doing, I mean, and that's a character. That's not you on a regular basis. That's just a character you're imbibing. That's a character you're refusing. So it's not you. So you're good, as long as it makes you happy. My dad was like, oh, it's good. Wow. My parents and are very also liberal. your parents are they're, actually exceptional. They're very liberal. Really, yeah, they, they are. are. So do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't. I don't have a serious boyfriend. <laughs> uh, what happened? Why? I had a five-year relationship that was supposed to lead to marriage, but we had some issues. And domestic violence was one of it, so it was a lot of other things attached to it. Then again, I just couldn't survive it all through the way. I was really in love, so I didn't really see that part, that that was a big deal for me. And when it got up to my hook, that was, I was really done, so. Please tell us more about it, because this is one of the issues we're facing today, domestic violence and all, so we would like to hear more. It was just overly protective and um, really jealous of a lot of things, you know and he was always hitting me so for some very petty reasons so initially i never knew it was like this so on, along the way along the years i realized it was like this but i, I didn't know what to do because i was in love <laughs> i was stupidly in love i guess <laughs> so at what point did you decide that i've had it up to here i have to leave when he came back to nigeria and was staying in my own apartment and on his birthday he was acting really crazy, and when he hit me again, that was the last time I took it out from him. So I had to end it on his birthday. Okay, so and, but not like I don't have friends. I have friends too. I mean, I'm hanging out, so. So you're I'm open good. to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a yes, actually. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, as an actor, especially a budding actor and a model. You can't take away the fact that some of, um, should I say, the directors, producers sometimes, you know, they try to abuse um, some of their actors sexually, especially the body ones and all. Have you had such an experience before? I have had that, those experiences here in Nigeria and it's crazy and it's terrible because I know, like, I, I know Nollywood is very saturated, you know, a lot of things happening left and right, you know, there are a lot of, um, upcoming actresses and actors who are very desperate to go, to go, I mean, on camera, on TV, basically. And then, so these directors and these producers see how, see their desperate in it, and they see how desperate they are. So they want to like del I mean, delve on it and then see how they can just take advantage of them. So I have been a victim because whenever I, I go for castings and auditionings and stuff like that, and I get to be picked one way or the other, it, it always boils down to, I like you, I want to take care of you, I want to, I want to what's the word? I want to protect you, that's the word most of them uses, you know, and I'm like, okay, really? I'm a well-trained actor, I'm not supposed to be sleeping around with you because I need you to put me in your production. Are you serious? So that is one of the reasons why I had to, you know, Tim low in this industry because it's, it's really messy, it's saturated. You have to be very strong to delve in. If you're not strong, you're just going to be floating around the corner or you're, you're going to be forced to doing what you're not supposed to do, like sleeping around with people you're not supposed to sleep around with because of one silly production. It feels good to know that you have a stand even as an upcoming uh, actor. Mm -hmm. It's always good to know that. So, um, would you say that your um, acting or modeling does not really affect your religious life? Does, how do you balance that? First of all, I'm not a church person. I don't like going to churches. Because I had my history, bad histories with churches in Nigeria and abroad, mostly Nigeria. I mean, so I'm, I just worship God in my house, in my heart. I think God sees everyone, everyone's heart. So he sees how, how, um, how much you love him, basically. And he blesses you, whosoever you are. You don't need to go to the church to, to praise God and to show your love or your blessings to God and stuff like that. So about religion and stuff like that, nah. Obviously, something triggered that. Why did you decide that you're gonna stay at home and pray and not go to church? Well, I go to church, but that's like maybe like twice in a year. It's funny, ridiculous, because I used to be a serious conk church goer, 
So one time my dad had stroke. I was in England, England at the time. I had to rush back to Nigeria because the pastor said, or the prophet said that my dad stroke was caused by my uncle. My grandfather was the king of my village. So they said my grandfather's brother was the one who caused my dad's stroke. Like, it's a huge jazz, jazz of my dad. So I had to fly back to Nigeria because I'm the only daughter, stuff like that. I had to come back. I was really scared. So we got back, I got back to Nigeria. We're trying to like, we had to pump some money to the church because the church, before you go for any counseling, you have to pay some money for counseling, pay money for this, pay money for that. Sometimes they pick you up. You know when they pick you up in the church and they're like, then God says to come and donate some money to the church, stuff like that. They used to, they used to pick us out. We were always in the front row. Wow. So you pay a lot of money to the point that the man came to my house and they did some sort of prayers for us. And then ever since that man came to my bedroom, to my apartment, my parents' house, I've been having a series of crazy nightmares wow. and illusions, serious ones, spiritual attacks left and right. So what kind of church is that in the first place? And not only that one, there's one other church we, we, we are going to from time. We had to stop going to that one because of the fact that my dad has to, had to go to a new church that said, you know, then when, I, when we had this problem at some point, we had to talk to the pastor for help. Run off. So why are we going to church? I thought church is supposed to be a place for help. Not just, not just to give your money to, for offerings and titans. It's supposed to help one another in the church. That's what churches are meant for. Worship and pray so God and then Exactly, they should be able to help one another in the church. That's what churches should be. So why would I go to church when they're busy doing stupid things and wasting our time and taking our money for no, for no damn reason? Bullshit, trust me. My parents, my dad, I think he's learned his lesson already. My mom's family from Jabari Ignatius, so just like that. You know the way they have, so anyways, I don't, they can, they can go if they want to go, but not me. I just go once in a while, twice in a year, I'm good. Have you ever had this discussion with your parents? My parents, no. I always don't. Nobody, no one's talking to me about any church, church-related story. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm good with, okay, without being um, church. Taking you back to um, the play, the Jude Idada's play, you went nude on stage, and possibly, if such roles come your way, you're going to take them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, given the society we live in, Nigeria is a very, very conservative society like I said earlier yeah especially the men mm -hmm. have you ever um, thought about the fact that taking such roles could scare men or suitors from you mm -hmm. yeah I thought about that so Nigeria Nigeria men the unexposed ones just the unexposed ones because seriously what I did on stage is art what is acting acting is make-believe it's art it's aesthetics it's beauty. Make believe is, is not real. So I was on stage nude. Doesn't mean I am that on a normal regular basis. Sure. Doesn't mean that's marvelous. Marvelous is different from that person. That, that character was Chema. That was a character. That wasn't me. Especially Nigerian men who are well exposed into aesthetics, in, into art, into this, this field who, doesn't, who, who aren't really aware of acting what it takes to be an actor, okay. being an expressionist, you know, art as a whole. Those are the only ones who really think what I did was really nasty and bad. But the ones who were very exposed, those are the ones who understand that that was, that was art, you know. Art is beauty, as I said. Art is, art is beauty. True that. True that. So, um, you know, being an actor comes with a lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. Backlash, irrespective of what you think mm -hmm. you can bring to the table or what you think you are doing as an actor. Mm -hmm. A typical African man does not care. They get to judge you based on what they see. True. Understand. So how do you intend to handle negativity? Negativity only comes to those who allows it come to them. So you can block negativity if you want. So, so far, I've, I've, I've done good in that, in that field, in that area. So I'll just keep on blocking negativity. All I just receive, I want to receive is positivity, positive vibes to help me grow. Because I'm not living for any negativity for, for, any, for any reason. That will only, I mean, tarnish me down, weigh me down, destroy me, you know. So why listen to all of those crap when I can just focus on positive vibes and receive it from my family, from my friends who understand me much better. I don't care about what, what some some Nigerian men will think about me related to what I did on stage. 
That is their own. Opinions. Exactly. That's that, those are their own opinions, not my opinion. So obviously, you have a thick skin, so that works. As long as my dad and my mom are cool with me, and God is good with me, yeah. I won't give a. All right. So um, I would like you to tell us how you met the producer and the writer of Trisom, Jude Idada. How did you meet him? How did you even get to find out about the play? I think it was destined to happen. My meeting with Jude was very, was really, really ordained, I guess. It was destined because, um, so I was, I was working on this project, Soldier Story. Okay. Soldier Story Part 2. A film? The or film, a, fe a feature film. Oh, okay. The Part 2 of it, yeah, by Frankie Ogger. So um, I was on Top Melon Bridge with, um, with the crew. I thought the whole acting. So this guy yeah. walked up to me and said, I think she made someone. I think she made Jude. Jude is a very crazy director and producer and playwright, a poet. I was like, OK. He was all talking about the crazy, crazy part of Jude. I'm like, OK, let's meet him. So the next day, we had a meeting planned with Jude. We had to go to Jude's house. The whole plan and the whole idea was meeting with Jude and talking about his feature film that he was going to produce towards the end of this year, you know, or, or say quarter of a year or whatever. So I got, I got to Jude's house, then Jude showed us a clip he already worked on last year or two years ago. He was, 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 was still working on the editing and all that stuff. So, and then he talked about the play that he's working on at the moment. And he said he, said he already got his actors involved in it and they're already rehearsing for the whole play. And then he said, but there's one person missing. You need someone to take upon that role I got. So the problem he had was he met a couple of actors, actresses who said they couldn't play that, that character for some reasons, for the cultural beliefs and all that stuff. Nigeria, this, Nigeria, the family that my <laughs> husband is, you know. So um, he was talking on and on. I'm like, OK. I was surprised because I feel like you're an actor. So why are you having, why are you withholding some things, you know? So then he said he, he got a stripper. He, had to, he, he was forced to go in to get a stripper to come play that character because no actor agreed to do that. So the stripper said she wanted that she, she would do the character on one condition. She actually go for the character on one condition, which, which was, um, you know, in the, in the character, you're meant to, the initial thing was my husband was meant to give me a head, couldn't lingers, you know, and then she said that she wanted to feel it in real, for in reality, no fake. So it was supposed to be fake, like he's in front of me, I'm just there doing all the mornings and all that stuff. But she said she wanted to feel his tongue in a cleat and all that. So anyways, so Judy was like, that's nasty. And they can't do that because the guy is married. And besides, who's going to do that to you? And she said she wants to come on stage. So that was really nasty. And she was frustrated. So I came on board. And I'm like, I've done something similar to this in Europe. So. I'm surprised you didn't get any actors to play this character. Yeah. I just kept quiet. So he was like, oh, you can do it? I was like, OK, let's see. Let me go through the storyline. So I went through the script, I went through everything. I knew who the actors were going to be on board. I was impressed. The story was on point. Everything was sweet. It was daring. It was thrilling. It was psycho. It's a psycho erotic story. So I was moved, and I said, OK, let's do it. And that's how I got it. Wow, interesting. So uh, tell us a little bit about the story and the whole experience, both on stage, behind the scene, and the crew in general. Okay. Threesome is a psychoerotic, sensual, thrilling drama. It talks about marriage, desire, and morality. So it sort of like educates people, I mean, some people who have this poor sexual background in your marital homes who aren't, who aren't really exposed to BDSM and stuff like that, who aren't, who aren't really able to try new things, people who aren't really adventurous sexually. So this play is really about that. I mean, the, the mother-in-law, the husband and the, and the wife. So this is husband got married to this lady who is really, really sexy and she, she wants to try new things. But the husband is very boring in his sexual life. He's very boring and he's not willing to try new things. He's not willing to go adventurous. He's not willing to go crazy. And she's willing to do everything for her husband to make him happy and make the marriage really sweet and booming. But he's not willing to do all of that stuff. So then she packs out of the house. She leaves the house because she's frustrated and because it's not even following her up. You know, and then the mother-in-law came on board, which is the, the lady's chairman's mother. 
when she comes about teaching her son-in-law, her daughter's husband, how to give a woman a good head, Kunilingus. So along the way, why, why she was teaching the husband how to practice Kunilingus in a sweet way, they, they, they hooked up, they kissed, and they, they realized that they've had, they always had feelings for each other from time. And from that, the drama goes crazy and hot and booming. And yeah, so I, my character was, because we have two Chama in the story, in the play, which is um, Uzo and me, which I mean. So Uzo was a Chama, the wife. So I am the second Chama. That's Chama in Dyer's imaginary mind, you know. That's where I come on board, right. practicing the whole language with my husband. You sure had husband. Fun. I did have fun. It was really amazing. It was, it was, a, a, it was, it was beautiful working with the actors on stage. They're really amazing. They're sweet. So on a very lighter note now, if you had the opportunity to um, hang out and probably have a dinner with a particular celebrity, who would that be? Um, you picked our young girl. Why? Why you need Peter? Because she's she's very educated. She's 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 also an expressionist in a, in in a field as well. She's she's just a great actor. She's she's one to just sit and dine with. I probably gain a thing or two from her. Just sitting and discussing with her so about art. So should we consider her your role model too? Yes, she and Maggie Roberts. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So They're great that means actors. Uh, we should. Um, you would like to act alongside I would Lupita. love to act with Lupita Younger. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so so quickly, what inspires your craft or who inspires you? My family. My family is very encouraging. I've got the best parents ever. They're very encouraging. They're very sweet. So the family and God. God is everything. Okay, so how do you um, intend to keep this going? know stay relevant this is a very actually competitive um, industry. industry yes we have a lot of good actors in Nigeria mm -hmm. you have to be on top of your game to be able to keep it up here True. so how do you intend to stay relevant um, by improving in my career you know and hoping to get more roles from directors and producers the good ones who are willing to involve me in the productions if they would like <laughs> All right, so, haven't um, said that. Are you open to any role? Say, being a lesbian, you wouldn't mind just any role at all. Being an actor, of course, are you open to taking... Being an actor, role? you should be open to taking any daring role, like the one I did with Jude's, on, I mean, Jude's play. You know, that was like, real, that was way to the top, you know. So lesbianism, the lesbian, the lesbian character is like really little compared to what I did. So was, I'm good, any role at all. As long as it's daring and thrilling and punk, I'm good. Wow, such an interesting moment with you, Marvelous Dominion. Thank I you. had fun. Hope you did have fun. Too. I did have fun. Thank you. Thank All you so right. much Thank for having me. Thank you so much for coming on Media Room Hub. Thank you. Thanks All for right. having me. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.